QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Inventory Adjustment. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop sample rock castle construction practice file we set up in a prior presentation. Going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page. View drop down, open windows is open. Going to the reports drop down, looking at the company and financial, opening up that P&L profit and loss tab. 01012421324 tab and customizing that report by the way that's january to december 2024 on the range customizing that report so i could change the fonts and numbers a bit bringing it up to 12 okay yes please okay one more time with the reports drop down company and financial this time bringing it on down to the balance sheet gonna change that date to 12 31 24 and customize that report fonts and numbers change the size of that font bringing it up to 12 once again okay yes please and okay i know i'm doing that quickly but we do it every time that's going to be the routine so now we're back over to the home page we're focused on the vendor section noting that the vendor specifically means that we're paying somebody else in terms of quickbooks terminology money eventually going out of the company uh, in order to purchase goods and service used in the company quick recap of what we've gone over so far in terms of the forms the easiest way to pay for expenses would be to be paying them electronically perhaps in that case we would still be using a right check form when we possibly use the bank feeds the bank feeds would use the right check form the form that decreases the checking account the other side going to an expense account we'll actually talk about that form a little bit more in a future presentation or we might actually write physical checks sometimes in which case we want to write the check first typically to see when it's going to clear and that will be important and then reconcile we'll talk more about reconciliations in a future presentation we might take a step away from a cash based type system to an accrual one entering a bill a bill increasing the accounts payable and then the other side going to say an expense then we pay off the bill with in essence a check form one that decreases the checking account but the other side specifically decreases the accounts payable the liability then we talked about the inventory which is our focus now because we're going to have to adjust the inventory so we're going to go outside of the vendor section over here a bit but really this you can think of this as kind of part of the vendor cycle because we're talking about inventory kind of on the purchasing side generally remember the reason it's over here is because inventory is one of those things that kind of goes from the vendor side to the customer side we purchase the inventory we sell the inventory we purchase from vendors we sell to customers but the adjustment i'm going to think of it more kind of on the vendor side of things so we've got the purchase order up top remember that we only use the purchase order if we're able to order the inventory before uh, we actually pay for it we can imagine ordering that like a hundred cups or something from a company in china or something like that requesting the inventory then they're going to send us the inventory possibly with a bill if we imagine we receive the inventory with a bill that's when we're going to enter it into the system that's what we did last time that increases the inventory side of things now notice the next step would be of course us selling the inventory well of course we could pay for the bill but we're going to sell the inventory from an inventory perspective on the customer side of things with a sales receipt or an invoice invoice or a sales receipt and that will record the decrease to the inventory notice when tracking inventory within the quickbooks system we're using a perpetual inventory system meaning inventory is going to be tracked in a sub ledger as we enter the bill as we 
and it's gonna be decreased as we enter the invoice and the sales receipt if we set it up correctly. We'll talk more about setting up the items to do it correctly in the second half of the course. The other inventory option would basically be using a periodic method, in which case you might track the inventory outside of QuickBooks, possibly with Excel or something like that, and adjust it through physical counts periodically, end of the day, end of the month, end of the week, or something uh, like that. Now, the, the system where you have a perpetual inventory system is great, but you still have to do a physical count from time to time because even though it's being tracked within QuickBooks, something can get off, right? Some, you could have shrinkage, you could have spoilage, something could be stolen. So clearly the count that you have in QuickBooks might not match your physical count, in which case you would have to make an adjustment to the physical count. That's where this basically adjustment item would happen over here. So let's just give a quick recap of when that scenario kind of might happen. So if I go to the balance sheet, for example, we've got the inventory here. So the inventory on the balance sheet, we're down inventory at the 30,683. And uh, if I double click on that and look at the 010124, so it goes up with the bills and down with the invoices, we can see closing that back out. We wanna see the subledger of the actual kinds of inventory that we have. So if I go to the reports up top, and go to the inventory account and the inventory valuation summary. And I could change the date to 12, 31, 2, 4. So now we've got the on hand amount. Now this is according to QuickBooks because QuickBooks is tracking the on hand amount as we go. It's valuing that based on the value of the item that we said for the cost of the item. And that's how we're getting down to this 30,683, which should tie out to what we have over here on the balance sheet. Going back to the inventory, now it's possible uh, that the inventory, for example, if we do a physical count, for example, these cabinets, let's say, don't add up to 423. Let's say we only count 400 of them. Well, clearly then someone stole the cabinets. This cabinets got lost somehow. Possibly the cabinets got old. It could be the case that cabinets become immaterial. We got 10 years ago cabinets in here. So our, our inventory, we have inventory that has no value anymore or something like that. In that case, we're going to have to reduce the value of the inventory. So that means that we're going to have to adjust this to our physical count. So we have to adjust the sub ledger here. And we also have to adjust the total, which is going to be the asset value here, which will make an adjustment to, to the balance sheet right there. The other side needs to be recorded somewhere as well, which would typically be going to the the uh, income statement, right? It's going to be a loss or shrinkage. It might be called inventory shrinkage or something like that, or you might record it into cost of goods sold if you just want to uh, put it to cost of goods sold. But uh, that's when this would come into play. So then you would go over here and say, okay, homepage, we can go then to the to the inventory drop down and I'm going to adjust the quantity of inventory. And so now that we know what this form is going to do, we're going to say, okay, the quantity we're going to have, let's do it by quantity, not by total quantity and total. I'm just going to do the quantity because that should adjust the total because I'm adjusting the, the, the physical count. Notice if you do the quantity and total, then you're going to have the new value kind of calculation over here on the right hand side. I'm just going to do the quantity and we can do it as of, I'll just say 12, 31, 2, 4. You're probably going to do it, you know, when you do a physical count, if you're doing a perpetual inventory system, meaning it's being adjusted every time you enter a bill and every time you, you uh, make a sale with an invoice or sales receipt, then the system's going to be recording it. Then you possibly want to still do the physical count, which might happen. You still might do it nightly or you still might do it weekly, but you might do it on a monthly basis or something like that so that you can shore up what the actual physical count is to what's being recorded in the system. If there are differences, then of course, you, you wanna say, okay, is anybody stealing stuff or what's going on here? So then you can go to an account, you might make another account called, called shrinkage or something like that, or you might put it to like the cost of good sold account. Uh, basically in general, I'm not actually gonna record this just to show you the process. Now notice this company, again, it's a little bit different, a little bit more complex because it's a job cost system. So if you had these items that were applied to particular jobs, that's gonna make, make it a little bit more confusing. Just note that remember there's a couple different kinds of inventory 
companies that you could have. The easiest one is one where you're just gonna wholesale, you're gonna, you're gonna buy it and then you're gonna mark it up and that's gonna be the profit that you're gonna make versus actually making the inventory job cost system or process cost system fall under that tool. Those two methods where you're gonna buy raw material and then put work into it, value into it to get to the finished product, right? So now you got different components of inventory. But in any case, then we're gonna say, uh, find, select, let's let's pretend we've got these cabinets here, cabinet poles that's that have the unit on hand at the 423. And so I'm gonna add that. And uh, so it puts the amount on hand. If we imagine that now it's only 400, then of course it's gonna make the adjustment of 23, right? It's gonna make that adjustment for us. And that would be the general idea. Now I'm not actually gonna record this. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and record it. I'll record this, this will adjust things. So, so if you're following along with the same data file and the numbers are matching up, then you can actually record this transaction. So I'm gonna put the quantity 1231.24, the other side's gonna to go to 501 cost of goods. And let's go ahead and say, save it and close it all right and then we're going to go over to the balance sheet on the balance sheet side of things if i double click on the inventory and the, there's our there it is right there so there's the adjustment if i double click on that adjustment so there it is okay and so it decreased the actual physical the account and then it also it's going to go into it decreased the account it's also going to go to the other side of the account which is the profit and loss. So in the profit and loss, I just put it right into the cost of goods. So here, I believe, is the account we used. So there it is. There it is right here, inventory adjustment. So if I double click on that, there's the inventory adjustment and it's not gonna throw us off from our, our uh, sub-ledger. So we want our sub-ledger, if I go back to the balance sheet, to tie out to that still. So if I go to the sub ledger inventory valuation summary, it should update automatically. The cabinets are now at 400, which they adjusted the average cost to accommodate for that. So that total comes down to the 30,624.52. That should match then what's on the balance sheet, 30,624.52. So you can see the perpetual system can be a little bit complex to set up. Uh, but once it's set up, it, it could, it, you know, it should be recording things as you go. But again, if to record things as you go, you got to use the forms, the appropriate forms to make sure that everything ties out properly, meaning, you know, the, the, the bills have to be entered with the items set up properly. And then when you sell stuff, you got to use the, the invoice and the sales receipts properly. And that doesn't mean that you can not do a physical count anymore. You still have to do the physical count because it's quite possible that something happened outside in real life different than what's in the system. Something spoiled, something got stolen, something, you know, there was shrinkage or something like that that you're gonna have to make adjustments for periodically.